What's up guys, my name is Ace, and yesterday, or really late last night for me, we got a pretty massive update within Modern Warfare with a bunch of weapon balancing changes, as well as a bunch of other additions and changes. Today, I wanted to have a deep look at all of the weapon changes that were made with this update. I am only going to be focusing on the weapon changes. I'll likely talk about some of the other stuff in future videos, but since there were so many weapon changes, I just wanted to put that all together in one video and make that my primary focus. So, hopping right into it, the Renetti got quite a few nerfs, especially with the Burst mod equipped on it. But the first nerf applies whether you have the Burst mod on or not. They reduce the maximum amount of ammo that you can carry with the Renetti. And this only applies if you're picking ammo up with Scavenger, or if you're using Fully Loaded, for instance. Previously, you could hold 135 rounds in reserve, now you can hold 90 in reserve, which is still a pretty significant amount, that's still tons of ammo, and if you're going pistol only for instance, that's still plenty of ammo for you, but it has been cut down by a very noticeable amount. Next up, with the Mark III Burst mod, there was a significant hip spread increase, which I'll just show you the comparison here, this is all post-patch. The base hip spread is actually pretty tight on the Renetti, but as soon as you add that burst, it really widens that hip fire spread a lot. And then also, the next thing they did here is they also increased the hip spread while using Akimbo and the Mark III burst together. And you can see that it's even a little bit wider than the standard Mark III burst hip fire spread. Additionally, they went really hard on this burst mod. They actually decreased the damage values as well, and we can look at the pre-patch and the post-patch here. The main thing you'll notice is it's still going to be a 3-4 to four shot kill as long as you're hitting the upper torso, but now we no longer have a 3 shot kill potential to the lower torso up close like we used to have. On top of this, another really big thing here is there is no longer a headshot multiplier while using the burst mod with the Renetti. So this means you deal exactly the same amount of damage to the upper torso as you would to the head. So that makes this burst mod quite a bit less effective, but like I said, as long as you're hitting those upper torso shots, it's still going to be pretty much the same performance. However, the next thing I want to look at is the combination of using Akimbo and the Mark III burst mod, they nerfed this into the ground. So with this, they significantly reduce the damage values, and once again, I'll show you guys the pre-patch and the post-patch here. And the biggest thing to point out is it's no longer possible if you're using Akimbo and Burst to get a 3-shot kill on an enemy target. It will take at least 4 shots to kill. Once again, there is no extra headshot multiplier here. And if you stretch the range out on this a little bit, it could take you up to 7 shots to get a kill on an enemy with 100 health. It's also worth noting that when you start factoring armor into the equation, any slight change in damage is going to have a bigger effect the larger the health pool is. And therefore, the Renetti with the Mark III Burst and the Akimbo attachment basically got destroyed within Warzone. Since the Snake Shot got the big nerf, these Akimbo Renettis have kind of taken that role, but not nearly to the same extent I've found. I didn't find that they were completely decimating everything up close and they were like the new, completely overpowered thing, but they were kind of the next best things compared to the pre patch Snake Shots, and a lot of people have been using them. After this update, though, I'm not sure that they're still viable in this area or at least not really powerful. They might be viable, but they're not gonna be as good as they used to be. Now, moving on to the next gun, this is the FAL. With this, they stated that they sped up the aim down sight speed a little bit. However, based on my testing at 60 FPS, this is pretty much a negligible change. I'm seeing maybe a half frame difference here, but generally speaking, this doesn't really change the effectiveness of the FAL at all. It went from 284 milliseconds to sometimes 284 milliseconds and sometimes 267 milliseconds. So like I said, it's like a half frame difference in there. So that one you probably won't notice too much. However, the next one is the SCAR. Finally, this gun got some love in the aim down sight department. Pre-patch, this was a 350 millisecond aim down sight time, which is ridiculously slow for an assault rifle. Now it's 317 milliseconds, which is still quite slow. It's still among the slowest in the assault rifle category, but it's at least somewhat within the realm of what an assault rifle should be. And if you stack up on attachments to help with your aim down sight time, you could really bring this down to where it should be in the assault rifle category. So I would say this actually makes the SCAR a much more viable choice than pre-patch, and I might even use it a bit more often. After that, we got a little bit of a buff to sniper rifles when they're holding their breath. With this, basically, they just lowered the penalty for holding your breath for too long. So when you hold your breath for too long to the point where everything becomes unstable and you completely lose that stability, it looks like you recover much faster from this now. Unfortunately, I didn't do any pre-patch testing on this because this wasn't something I ever anticipated would be changing. But yeah, you can get back to holding your breath just a few seconds after holding your breath for too long. 
Now, moving on to the next weapon change, and this one was very significant. The VLK Rogue Shotgun got some pretty serious buffs. First up, they slightly increased the rate of fire from 136 rounds per minute up to 147 rounds per minute. That one doesn't really change too much, but it is a nice little boost that it gives you. As for the next change to this though, this is where this gun got a very noticeable boost. Its one-shot kill potential went from just 4.1 meters up to 5.3 meters, which is very respectable considering the fact that this is a semi-auto with a decent enough fire rate that you can get that second shot off pretty quickly. So this gun's going to be much more effective in those really close quarter situations. On top of this, apparently they increased the damage range on the 6-inch revolt barrel for the VLK Rogue. I haven't gotten around to doing my really detailed tests with this yet and like testing individual attachments pre-patch, so I don't know what this did pre-patch. But post-patch, our one-shot kill range with this barrel is 4.3 meters, which means we get a roughly 20% reduction to our damage range while using this barrel. So it's still not great for you in the range department, but I don't know how bad it was pre-patch. Apparently, it's at least a little bit better here. But that wraps it up for the buffs to the VLK Rogue. Now let's move on to the last gun that got a significant buff in many, many areas. This is the Holger 26. Finally, this gun is receiving some love. This thing had basically no place in the game pre-patch just because there were very similar guns that were just straight up better in every single category to the point where there was just no reason to ever use the Holger over some of its similar counterparts. But for the base Holger, the first thing they did is they increased the overall movement speed from 92% up to 92.5%, so very minor change. You probably wouldn't even notice this at all. Next up though, they improved the aim down sight time, and this is very noticeable. The previous aim down sight time was 450 milliseconds, now it's 400 milliseconds. And while that is still quite slow, especially compared to like assault rifles for instance, it is now the fastest aiming down sight LMG, which is exactly where it should be in my opinion. As for the next buff to the Holger, they stated a slight recoil reduction in the patch notes, but this isn't slight by any means. As you can see here, this is a massive improvement to our recoil. It doesn't kick nearly as hard. It still kicks upwards and to the right, but doesn't go nearly as far to the right, and it doesn't even go upwards as much either, so I would say the Holger is significantly easier to control when it comes to recoil now. And that wraps it up for the changes to the base version of the Holger, although a lot of the attachments also got some pretty significant adjustments. The first one is the FTAC 8.9 inch Spitfire barrel. With this one, they improved the aim down sight time. Pre patch, it was 384 milliseconds, and post patch, it's 334 milliseconds, so quite a significant improvement there. On top of this, we got a better boost to our movement speed. Pre patch, our movement speed boost with this barrel was 2%, and post patch, it's 3.5%. And keep in mind, that's stacking on top of the already improved base movement speed on the Holger. But finally, for this barrel, they reduced the hip fire spread. This one is so slight, though, it's hardly even noticeable. It's only a 5% reduction to the diameter of our hip fire spread, which, like I said, hardly noticeable at all. But moving on to the next attachment to change, this is the XRK Ultralight Barrel. And with this one, what they did is they just improved the aim down sight time. Pre patch, we had an aim down sight time with this barrel of 417 milliseconds, and post patch, it's 317 milliseconds. So, this is a ridiculous improvement. This is massive. And therefore, if you are going for raw aim down sight time in the barrel department, the ultralight barrel is the way to go. As for the next attachment that changed, and I'm really happy this one got a bunch of buffs, this is the 30 round magazine. With this, they reduced the sprint out time from 284 milliseconds for our standard sprint out time down to 200 milliseconds. And then for our tactical sprint out time, this is a big reduction. It went from 500 milliseconds down to just 284 milliseconds. So this new sprint out time with the 30 round mag is actually better than all of the assault rifles in the game. On top of this, with that 30 round mag, they improved our aim down sight time from 400 milliseconds down to 317 milliseconds. So you're now within the realm of a slower aiming down sight assault rifle rather than a fast aiming down sight LMG, which is kind of nice, but you can always stack more attachments as well to really bring it down to the assault rifle level. Next for the 30 round mag, we get faster movement speed overall. And with this one, I didn't really notice an improvement. It's still roughly a 3% boost to our overall movement speed. Although now that we have a better base movement speed with the Holger, we are going to be able to move a little bit faster. And finally for the 30 round mag, our hip fire spread improved slightly as well. This was about an 8% improvement to the diameter of our hip fire spread which just like with the previous attachment that changed that, it's not that big of a difference. It's hardly noticeable. But those aren't the only attachments that changed. The next one that got a buff for the Holger was the no stock attachment. And with this one, our sprint out time actually improved from 284 milliseconds down to 250 milliseconds. And the tactical sprint out time changed from 500 milliseconds down to 334 milliseconds. 
Next up, we get a better movement speed boost with the no stock attachment. I didn't have any values pre-patch for this, but post-patch, we get a 4% boost to our movement speed, which is pretty big. And on top of this, we got reduced hip fire spread, and this is much more noticeable than the other attachments that got improved hip fire spread. This gives you about a 12% reduction to the diameter of our hip fire spread, which is definitely starting to become noticeable. On top of this, we get improved aim down sight time. Again, I didn't have the pre-patch values for this. I believe... I believe it helped by about 2 frames at 60 FPS, whereas now it's helping by 4 frames at 60 FPS. Our new aim down sight time with the no stock attachment is 334 milliseconds. But finally, there was one last attachment change for the Holger, and this is the stippled grip. And with this, we got improved aim down sight time. Again, I don't have the exact pre-patch values, but I believe it helped by either 1 or 2 frames at 60 FPS. Whereas now, our post-patch aim down sight time with stippled grip is 350 milliseconds, so 3 frames faster at 60 FPS, which is quite nice. So those are all the stated changes with the Holger and the various attachments. However, I did want to answer the question, is the Holger now worth it to use? Does it have a proper place in the game? And I would say the Holger is still not a super powerful gun by any means. I definitely wouldn't put it anywhere near a top tier weapon, however it is much more usable than it used to be, and I would say if you deck this out the right way and you get a nice aim down sight time that's within the realm of an assault rifle for instance, which you can easily do by stacking attachments, the Holger is now a really solid longer range assault rifle, I would basically say. It still doesn't really compete with the LMGs all that much. It now fills that role a lot better of sort of an assault rifle LMG hybrid where it's kind of in between. It's going to be beat out by most assault rifles up close, and it's going to be beat out by most LMGs at longer ranges. However, it does a nice job of finding that balanced middle ground in between the two. But with that, that pretty much wraps it up for all of the weapon changes that I wanted to talk about in today's video. There is one other weapon change that applies to Warzone that I still need to do some more testing on, but it's actually looking very strange. This is to the RPG. They stated within Warzone, they reduced the RPG kill radius for players with full armor. However, I've done some basic testing here, and it looks like they actually buffed the RPG in many other areas. So, more details to come in the video probably tomorrow, although it might end up being a couple days from now. We'll just have to wait and see on that. But based on my initial testing, the RPG actually got buffed with this update. But with that, I'd like to know in the comment section below, what do you guys think about all of these weapon changes that were made with this update? Are you generally happy with these changes? Are there some that you're really unhappy with? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated, and don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.